and uh, what is this automatic test equipment is simply any apparatus that is used for performing tests on device on that test what we mean by device on that test is any manufactured electronic or electrical component or product or system that is undergoing testing so the system that is used for testing it in factories is what we call or what we call automatic test equipment and the device on that test that's the, 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 the device that is being tested using ATE sometimes they call it equipment on that test or sometimes they call it unit on the test Now, uh, this automatic test equipment can be a simple computer which control measuring devices like uh, digital multimeter, like ammeter and others. And sometimes it can be a complicated system which is designed for that purpose and it has thousands, I mean dozens of test instruments within it. And the test equipment as well, it can be real, that is practical, solid, or hardware a device or sometimes it can be just a simulation uh, software that is used for testing equipment normally this is done in factories where electronics and electrical components are produced so they are tested before they are taken to the market and this uh, automatic test equipment is used for testing or diagnosing the fault in sophisticated electronics package or electronics parts for instance it is used for testing wafer and we know wafer is the base on which electronic uh, transistor or diode or even uh, integrated circuit are produced and this wafer you know it is from the uh, semiconductor materials it can be silicon it can be germanium and it can be even from the compounds one and of course it is used for testing what they call system on chips and this system on chips is nothing but a single uh, integrated circuit that can be used as standalone computer and sometimes it can be used for testing integrated circuits small ones and the big ones now what are the parts what are the components of the uh, uh, automatic test equipment first one we have uh, hardware we have the sensors and we have the software the hardware, they are those practical or physical parts of the system. We are going to see examples later. And the sensors are the ones that are connected to the device on that test in order to sense the signal so that the ATE can interpret it. And it also have software. And of course, whenever you have a software, definitely you must what? Develop a program that will be written or uploaded to the hardware for the control. And this function of this software, it is collecting and analyzing all the test results. In fact, the software is the brain behind which the ATE operates. Now, this uh, ATE must be programmed because we already talked about what? Software. And it can do the following uh, functions. It take the uh, data from the device on that test it will now record it, maybe save it on the, the memory of the system and of course display it so that it can be seen and measurement can be, I mean decisions can be taken. And of course the sophisticated ones, they can show you many thousands of measurements at the same time. As I said, they are of different types on uh, scales. Now for us to really understand what we are talking about, look at the pictorial views of ATE. The upper one and the one below, the typical examples of uh, ATE. And you can see that we have different sections that we are going to discuss later. So this is the block diagram of a typical ATE. Let us start from the right hand side. We have our UUT, that is the unit on that test. And this unit on that test is connected to the interface device. And of course, this is the sensing terminal. And it will now be delivered to input and output circuitry. That is a circuit that is responsible for reading or displaying or maybe producing the result. And this input output circuitry is connected to three blocks. We have stimulus devices, we have measurement devices, and we have power supply and the loads. 
the stimulus, the advance that will supply a signal that will trigger the ATE into action. When that stimuli is supplied, then the measurement devices will now start taking the data or information from the device on that test. And of course, none of them will work on it's powered by a power supply. So whatever these three do, they will be taken to the CPU, that is the central processing unit of the ATE. And of course, this uh, CPU, there must be a program written on it. And of course, as I told you, we can display the result. It can be displayed using monitor. And if you wish, you can even send it to printer for a hard copy uh, result. So as we have seen from that uh, block diagram, the ATE has the following uh, parts. The first one is a control device or the actual computer itself. We talk about the stimulus uh, source device and we also have seen the uh, response measurement devices. And of course we have input output switching devices and we have input output control devices. And of course we have the computer program that regulates and coordinate all the functions of the ATE. Now, what is the principle of operation of the ATE? The ATE operates when a test operator load what we call the test program set TPS onto the ATE, that is onto the uh, motherboard of the uh, co computer doing that. This uh, test program set, which is TPS, it can be loaded to the computer or to the a uh, ATE using memory devices such as DICS, CD, and it can be even flash memory stick. And of course, sometimes it can be loaded from a computer network or from a server and of course it can be resident it has been it can be inbuilt already in the ate hard device itself or the hard drive now the unit on that test as we have seen uh, on that block diagram is connected to the ate via the interface devices i mean this diagram just remember the block diagram here the uu T is connected to the interface uh, device and the ATE computer now directly controls the test process and how does it do that it will select the stimuli as I told you the stimuli are those signals that will trigger the ATE into action and it will also supply the power and it will also energize or activate the uh, signal generators and it can be digital signal it can be analog and it can be of different types of course this stimuli is the one that will now trigger the system into action and of course the responses that's the signal detected from the unit on that test they will be conditioned that is they will be modified and they will be rooted meaning they will be transferred to or transported to the appropriate measurement device because as i told you the ate can have so many testing capabilities it can measure current it can measure voltage frequency it can measure distortion and, and many things so whenever the signal is uh, detected from the uh, unit on that test it will now be directed to the proper device if it is voltage it will be transported to the uh, voltage measurement segments and like that now the operator is the one that will be monitoring the test sequence and he is the one that will now look at the display to see the results he is the one that will also check if there is any error or if there is any intervention that is needed he is responsible for regulating all this and of course he can do some adjustments meaning if an error is sent or displayed on the screen he will be the one to take proper action in order to adjust it to the normal uh, operation and he is the one of course that will do all the connections in the manual observations in the process of operating this uh, ATE and of course as I told you he is able to do this by monitoring what is displayed on the screen of the ATE now we talk we talk about the uh, test data that is the data that is obtained from this uh, ATE when it detects signals and make the pro I mean the appropriate measurement. So what are the functions that it serves? Number one, it it helps in uh, accepting or rejecting the device on that test. 
if you test your system and you want it maybe to be operating let's say at 20 kilohertz when you test it and you found that it is operating with it within that range it means you will accept your design and you can proceed to mass produce it and take it to the market but if instead of operating at 20 you found it operating at 2 kilohertz or maybe what 200 kilohertz of course it is far away from the design so it will enable you to accept or reject your device on that is depending on the result you've seen and the second purpose it serves it will provide useful information about the fabrication process that's the process you have taken in order to manufacture that system you are testing if you get a good result you know that that process is very good otherwise you will discard it and maybe make some adjustments the last one the information we get from the result of ate they serve as a means of telling us the weakness in our design process as i said when you see that this is what you expect and you get something far away from that of course that will tell you the process of designing that device you are testing is very weak and therefore you have to maybe implore some ways of uh, improving it so the test programs that we talked about they have uh, four basic elements that make up this uh, uh, test uh, program set the first one is the test program that is the code written the interface device that is the terminal at which we connect it and the test program instruction that is what is what are the commands contained in the program you have written and of course the last one is what we call support documentation and all these four we are going to discuss them one after the other yes as we have said the test program has four basic elements that's the set program uh, test program the interface device test program instruments instructions rather and support documentation and we said we are going to look at these four uh, basic elements one after the other let us start with the test uh, program the test uh, program as the name implies it is the one that contains the coded sequence that is the computer program written that will instruct the ATP on how to ATE on how to operate and when this uh, test program is executed on the automatic test equipment it will be the one that will give the system that's the complete ATE system a set of instructions which are enough to determine the condition of the component we are testing that is the unit on the test now for diagnostic uh, programs if you want to diagnose a system or any device to know whether it is healthy or where the uh, error is uh, coming from then the sequence of that uh, test program it will help you automatically isolate that is locate exactly where the fault is on that your UUT that is the unit on the test now the second component is the interface uh, device ID and its function is to provide actually the connection that's the meaning of the interface it provides the mechanical connection it provides the electrical connection and of course it gives you ability to use the components that's the terminals in order to condition your signal that is to route it to a particular point or site within your ATE so the interface actually as the name implies is to give you the physical connection it can be mechanical it can be electrical and of course it can be signal conditioning now the test program instruction which is the next one it function is to give provide the information that are required for carrying out the testing and the last one is what we call the support documentation and this support documentation is the part of the complete program its function is to give you the information it gives you the specifications it gives you schematic diagrams or sometimes logic diagrams which are necessary for you to analyze your unit on that test and find out where the problem is from what we are seeing here is that apart from the main program that runs on the ATE there is what we call the support documentation these are informations which are given as part of the complete uh, diagram if you carry out any uh, test and you are not sure of something maybe you are testing let's say a, 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 an oscillator if you go to this uh, uh, support documentation you can see the schematic diagram of that uh, oscillator and so that it will give you more information 
on what is supposed to be obtained at any point and you can now compare it with the result you are getting from your ATE. Now let us look at the methods, that's the processes of designing and developing the automatic test equipment. Of course uh, there are two main uh, methods of developing automatic test equipment. The first one is to design a special, that is a unique device. It is designed for that purpose to serve as automatic test equipment. And of course, if we want to understand this, let us go to the uh, block diagram of that uh, peculiar or the specific uh, system that is designed only for that purpose. If you look at this block diagram, at this end, that is the uh, far left, we have terminals where we have voltage, we have current, we have event, frequency, we have distortion, we have uh, frequency response, and this is the output uh, uh, points. Now all these ones, they are the points which are used for connection to our device on that test. If you want to measure the voltage, you connect to this, want to measure current up to the last one. And you can see that this terminal for voltage is connected to a uh, device or the interface we call it voltage measurement interface this is current measurement interface this is event this is frequency this is the output measurement interface and of course this is our frequency response interface and if you look at this we have a bus here that is connecting these interfaces with the actual brain of the computer where we have the microprocessor we have the ROM and we have the RAM. Now, if you look at this block diagram, it's a computer, it's a system that is specifically designed as ATE. Its function is only that. Now, whatever you obtain as a, um, as a result from this uh, ATE, you can either print it, you can either display it on the monitor, and of course, we have a keyboard that we can type some instructions for searching for uh, operating and starting the measurement and things like that. So this is the first method of designing ATE that is using a machine that is actually designed for that purpose. Now, this uh, ready-made ATE, it is capable of taking a number of measurements. For instance, as I've shown, we can measure current and voltage, we can uh, count event. What you mean by event is what's happened at a particular time. We call this one inter interrupt in a computer the programming of microcontroller. Then we have ability to measure frequency, we have the terminal for measuring distortion and the frequency response, and of course we have a, 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 a boost that is monitoring the flow of signals as I have shown here in the block diagram. So the control of different uh, measuring facilities in this uh, specific already made ATE they are provided by the microcontroller because you know the microcontroller is the what the brain of any system so in terms it controls the programs instructions that are written by the user because for any computer to work the uh, physical uh, material you have that is the hardware can never work unless you upload the uh, uh, software on it which is serving as instruction on how to operate so the output, as we have seen from the diagram also, it can be on displayed on the monitor, it can be printed using printer, and of course, it can be, uh, uh, it can be uh, from here, it can be, well, I, I mean, we have another terminal, which is the keyboard, we can use it for controlling how the system operates. So this is the first method of designing ATE. The second method of creating or designing ATE is to use a microprocessor uh, based PC that is a personal computer, a general purpose personal computer. You can use it to control general purpose measurement instruments. For instance, you can connect meters, that is current meters, volt meters, and what have you, uh, frequency meters, you can connect them to that computer. And there is an interface and also a program that will enable the computer to control this measurement device so that the device on that test can be connected to these meters and the result of these meters can be uh, uh, supplied or can 
be viewed monitor of the computer and of course you can have universal counters you can have logic analyzers you can have gen uh, signal generators all these can be connected to usual uh, pc we have and it will be responsible for controlling these devices while these devices will be sensing the signal from the device on their test and all these the meters the universal counters the logic analyzers and the signal generators and what have you they are now peripheral devices to the computer they are not inbuilt they are not part of the computer in the first one it is inbuilt but here we are the ones connecting them externally look at the uh, block diagram of this at the center you can see our computer and surrounding the computer we have our connection terminals for instance this digital voltmeter and this is a digital uh, current meter this is a printer this is our signal generator this is our uh, spectrum analyzer so many logic uh, analyzer and what have you so these peripheral components are now connected to the uh, uh, general purpose computer using what we call a BOSS interface so that the computer will be controlling these peripheral devices and they are what the ones that will be used for connection to the device on that test so that whatever they measure should be delivered to the system for further uh, processing and display now as i said all these peripheral devices they are connected through a BOSS structure and this BOSS structure we know a BOSS is nothing but a lines, conducting lines that can allow data to flow either to or from a computer uh, processor. So using this, uh, as you can see from this diagram, our bus is in these lines, the black ones, and it is the one that is used for connecting digital multimeter, a signal generator, a logic analyzer, oscilloscope, and of course you can see a line going to the right. And this line is extension of the bus where we can add so many number of other measurement instruments and whenever you want to change the system test uh, requirement you simply just remove the ink uh, the one that you are using for instance when i'm using a current meter then i want to measure voltage i will now connect to the voltmeter when i want to measure frequency i will now connect to the frequency meter just like that now, what are the applications of automatic test equipment? Of course, the automatic test equipment, they have several applications and the major applications are given in these four items. The first one, it is used in design and development in factories, in industries. During the design, you keep on testing for you to make sure that the design system is working according to the specifications. And of course, in the production, that is, you are done with the uh, design, the quality is okay for you. So when you want to mass produce any system, there is need for you to apply the quality control. And ATE can be used here to randomly select some of the manufactured and test them so that we can know the probability that all the other ones are okay or bad. The ATE is also used in uh, reliability and certification tests. Whenever a system is brought from another company and maybe you want to buy it for a uh, certain application in yours, then you have to take it to your department for reliability and certification to test and tell you that, yes, the quality is up to what we expect and it is having so, so, so percentage of reliability. And if not, then you return it. And finally, we use uh, ATE for services or servicing any faulty device when a system develop a fault you can use ATE to help you know what type of problem does it have and where which part of the system is that pro uh, problem existing then you can take a uh, accurate measure in order to rectify that so with this ladies and gentlemen this is the end of our lecture number five I want to repeat what I always say watch this video again and again thank you very much until we meet the next lecture